Um, as you come in, do not forget to hit the like button, share the content, and hit your notification bell so you can this, um, get notifications when I'm featuring live again and I release other really helpful content. For those of you who do not know me, who are tuning in for the first time, I am Dr. Jefferson, and I am a psychotherapist, life enhancement coach, empowerment coach, business coach, success in love and relationships guru. So I want you guys to um, to come on in here and kind of give yourself some space to be and some space to share what your insights are around online dating and the benefits um, thereof. Today, I'm going to share some healthy online dating boundaries. We're going to go through and talk about ways for you guys to avoid the love bomb from the narcissistic personality people um, and folks who just have narcissistic characteristics that are not necessarily narcissistic personality disorder um, diagnosed folks. We're going to talk about ways that you can catfish your process. And we're going to talk about some of the um, pros and cons of online dating, right? And the most important part, ways to stay safe while dating online. So as you're coming in, like I said, don't forget to like and share the content. If you want to share your experiences, I do believe that on one or two of the platforms, there is a link for you to join in um, on the show. I do use StreamYard as a means of um, broadcasting these things to multiple platforms. So if you hit the link, you can definitely join in and share your insights. And what I'll do now is try to kind of put it in the comments. Oops. Yeah. Nope. That ain't it. That's it. Um, and that way you guys have a means to do that. Okay. So hopefully everybody can see the comments. Um, thumbs up, loves, and all that good stuff if you can see that. And if not, then we'll go ahead and we'll move forward. You guys can comment and let me know you don't see it. And then I'll reshare it another way. So let's talk about this. Let's get into the nooks and crannies of the online dating um, platform. So if we talked about, if we go all the way back, let's take it back to MySpace, right? Or tagged. Does everybody, I don't want to kind of give away ages of people. So Tagged was a very popular online dating platform and, and kind of like a meetups, you know, now they have actually meetups, they have Google, they have so many different means now. Um, good morning, Trey. How are you? Um, or afternoon for me. Uh, don't forget to share this content on your platform and come on and share your experiences too. I'm sure you got some very interesting things to add to the conversation. Um but so if you guys remember, um, if you go all the way back, then maybe tagged, tagged and um, MySpace were popular, normal dating, meeting people, kind of, you know, means. And then we had Black Planet. We had um, what's that other one? Match started to kind of spring out and into place. And then we kind of moved into more casual dating um means online so you had craig craigslist you had um fling you had date hookup you know you had all of those things right and and folks you should just meet each other and then literally just hook up and that's it then we moved to tinder right right he said <laughs> oh you're a mess so a lot of people who are looking for casual hookups use the platform Tinder. Um, some people use the platform POF. You have Moco Space out there. There are tons. I could I could go on and on. And now more seriously dating people move to um, what is Christian Singles Match.com or something like that. Or I don't know those other platforms. But it's it's so many of them out there that you really can't even keep up with it anymore. Facebook even has a dating um, application for folks looking to hook up with folks and looking for meaningful, meaningful connections, right? So when you think about online dating, think about what are some of the benefits to, to dating people and meeting people online versus meeting them randomly in person. 
So if we look at the the just the element of dating, typically the man is the hunter. He's the hunter, the gatherer in every single way in traditional society. So now being online, it removes the anxiety that comes along with his process or his his purpose in that way. So it removes some of that that fear of rejection because now a computer system can protect you in a in a way. And some for some guys, it's still a very tough process. You know, I've had lots of folks in therapy to come in and say, you know what, this isn't for me. Dating online is even worse than dating in person. So I think that essentially we could still say that dating online can be equally detrimental emotionally to people's pride and their ego as other means. Okay. So but I want to know about your experiences. So I definitely want you guys to share your experiences as we navigate through. Um, well, you know, men are naturally hunters. Men are natural. That's why, you know, even if you go back to the foundation, the basic foundation or housing of religion, right? They say he who finds a good thing, right? It's meant for a man to kind of go out and, and search for and, you know, stone ages, guys doing their thing but it it kind of goes all the way back to the basic premise of humanity men are meant to be the hunter gatherer protector provider sort of thing and society is definitely shifting now and i think that that's why online dating is shifting too because i want to kind of talk about that so online dating now is um about matching Right. So females putting in what their requirements or their basic um, expectations out of a guy are out of a partner are. And then males listing those same things. And when these things are in alignment and congruent, um, they match. And so a female can initiate conversations first and then a dude can follow up and do his thing. Right. Here's the thing. Right. When we are looking at that piece, sometimes it makes it even more of a of a of a thing for a guy who is out there, you know, trying to hunt and and love bomb women to do that because now this woman has expressed that she is interested, and sometimes a woman's interest can be taken as desperation, can look a little bit like desperation. So you're online, you're looking. So if you're if you're trying to stay safe, right? Online ladies. What I say is you know, don't be overzealous to to reach out and connect with a man and not give him time to uh connect with you in a way that's meaningful. And so what that means is don't keep sending this man a million messages. I want you to take it back to the basic housing and foundation of you entering the online dating or any other dating world. And I want you to ask yourself, like, okay, what's annoying about the process of dating for me, right? And the most annoying thing I know for me as a woman who's been pursued by people for a very long time in various ways, that constant um, kind of like nagging once you've expressed to the dude that you're really not interested or you're just not into him like that because he doesn't fit those basic things, basic tenets that, that you want to, you know, see in a relationship. Um, one of the main things, hey, um, one of the main things that I see that keeps us safe in online dating is to protect our peace and positioning and your private information also. So you don't want your private information out there. You don't want to create an online platform that says, by the way, I live in, um, what, what's a good one? Turtle, turtle, whatever subdivision, right? In Atlanta. Because if you do, what you'll notice is that those people now have access to you. So if their intent were to stalk you, they can do that quite easily now. Also, you want to turn your location off once you've kind of found the location of guys that you're looking for. I say turn your location off because some of these apps to include Snapchat have a way for people to ping your location and see exactly where you are. So if it is a creep versus a person that's trying to build a healthy relationship, yeah, you just kind of open up the door and expose yourself to be stalked and then who knows what else. Um, so we're going to welcome Trey to the show and I want you to sh share your insights. 
what do you think? Um, what are some of your feelings about online dating as it's moved from its previous, its precursor, right? MySpace days, um, tag days to now. Well, me personally, I've only used one online dating site. I used Bumble for like maybe a day to try to find some high value white girls in my area. I ain't getting no bites after the first day I left alone, but like I guess typical online dating would just be my normal slide in a DM or something. It's not like I'm actually just online looking for women. Hmm. So sliding in the DMs, that's not being online looking for women. No, it's 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 kind of like you window shopping and you be like, oh, I actually want to buy that one. Interesting. Interesting. So do you think that being online gives you an opportunity to kind of just free freely shop or window shop for women in general? Well, it gives you access to a different to a, a wider variety than what you would see, like, say, if you went to the corner store or something like that. Hmm. So you think it gives you a wider reach of women? Yes. I, I guess you got a point there. And I do feel like that's one of the pros of online dating. I do feel like it does give you a, a further reach. But on on Bumble, I'm not sure because I'm not really familiar about that, but a lot of people have been talking about it because that's the one that women can kind of match up and then initiate conversations first. So it kind of mitigates the risk of a man just overzealously reaching out and being overwhelmed by so many messages when you open up your app or whatever, right? Excuse me. So I think that on, on Bumble, it may be a better platform for some women, but in some situations, I think that that's kind of like creating space for a person who is narcissistic or a person that is antisocial or a sociopath, right? Those types of folks that target women. Because I have noticed that there is an increased amount of women um, coming up missing after date from online dating situations in the last couple of years. Jeez. Yeah. So do you think that when you say you didn't get any hits, what does that mean on Bumble? Explain to me how Bumble works. Um, it was about five years ago, and I'm not even sure how it works. I guess I, th I guess it was like the Tinder, the typical swipe right crap, I guess, but it didn't work quick enough for me. <laughs> I just is I, I was impatient. I'm not one of those people that's going to sit there and swipe right all night at women, and uh, I don't have time for that. So, do you think that um, people like Kevin Samuels, Derek Jackson, and by the way, folks, a lot of people are saying Derek Jackson is back. So, for those ladies who love his stuff, you know, he never left. He went to Jesus. <laughs> he never left. <laughs> oh my God. I he left his platform for a while, no? He went to he went on a religious retreat to get himself right with God. Oh, I see. So now he's backing in full effect and telling women, you know, why they shouldn't let a man back in. And you have to buy the book. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm I'm with it. I'm with it. <laughs> but no, so if if you if you had a chance to get back on Bumble and have a positive experience today, what would that look like? I would not get back on it. Why not? You said you were looking to connect with white women. Hi, yeah, because I I saw it wasn't fast, and I just know how to pull up on Rhodes College and find those same white women that were on Bumble. So you pull up on college campuses looking for women. If I'm looking for white women, I will. Yeah, what is, wait a minute, what is wrong with that? That is where the future women of the world are at, in college. Great yeah, place yeah. to find them. For sure, for sure. But that's kind of like an old 80s approach to dating. So, I'm old. I was born in the 80s. <laughs> born, but not dating in the 80s. <laughs> nah, nah, nah I, was, I was still a lad in the 80s. Yeah, but, you know, that's the 80s approach, you know, to the early 90s approach to dating. But it's not an it's not necessarily. It still works. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not inundated. It, it still works, I guess. Kel says, when I started my online dating process, it was all new to me for the age I was. And a lot of things that I didn't know led to a few bad dates, although it eventually I found the love of my life. That's beautiful. <laughs> but So let's talk about the bad experiences. Like, what do you think... And for you, Trey, I know you were only on Bumble for a very limited amount of time and it didn't yield the results that you were looking for. But do you think that as a man, right, there are some things because that opens up a whole different um, discussion. We had a conversation yesterday on my platform about um, sexual orientation and gender and the world being ready for the LGBTQI plus community, right? This is a whole, this is a, a technically a branch off of this because a lot of people who are a part of that community sometimes use means to dating. I mean, their means for dating is online dating. It makes it easier for them to meet like-minded people without that confrontation of the physical, you know, interaction and things like that. So as a man dating, right, do you feel like um, your profile should include you have a preference for cisgendered women, or is that your preference at all? Like, should it, it, it your... should be part of your profile so everybody can be aware of what they're getting into? That's one of the cons I have about this uh, online dating. People can just they can lie, they can know they're transsexual, or whatever, and just trick you the whole time and not disclose this information to you. True. And then when you find out, you're supposed to just be like, oh, well, I love you. You did lie and ruin my life, but I'm, I'm going to forget that and still love you. Well, I, th I think it all depends on how long you've been in a relationship with them, though. Right? So in, if you've been in a relationship with them, if you've been building, right, and I think that people should have processes. I think staying safe when you're online dating, I think you should have um, limited per personal information. Like you don't want to put, you can put, I guess that, oh, I live in Atlanta. Atlanta is a huge place, right? It's lots of people. You could put that, right? But you don't want to put, I live in the Biltmore, right? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Because then you're bringing people to your front door. You don't want to put that I am, I don't think that folks should put out there, I am a transsexual, right? Because people who who have a tendency to target folks and do commit hate crimes, right? I feel like those people can now target you. So do you feel like they should disclose that before you physically meet up? As long as it's disclosed, and I think the people that, that may be targeting them, that's that's a small percentage, and those people need to get caught. If that's what they're doing, at least the online transaction will help that person get caught if they're out here targeting people and hurting them because of who they are. But I think it, more like-minded people would be drawn to like-minded people if they just out there and say what it is that they are. There's a whole market for people that's into what they're into. They don't have to trick people anymore. You think they trick people, though? It's, it's definitely tricking people if you're something that you're not and you're pretending to be that to somebody else. You're tricking that's, them. That's half of humanity. Do you know how many... <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm being honest. I gotta be honest. That's the way that people... How many people date, honestly, right? And put out there their true selves. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. Everybody shows their best face first, and then you see their ugly face later. Well, I'm told I'm an asshole all the time, so I must be a unicorn. Not necessarily. I think for me, I'm a person that is, I'm just, I'm, I'm the same across the board because I have very limited time. I think that you finding people that are busy, that have so many components going in life and that are very intentional in the dating process. Typically, it's the safest way to go about dating and being successful. Like like Kel said, he's saying that real conversations 
are paramount to being successful in dating, especially dating online. If you're having the right conversations before you do the physical meetup, you can eliminate the possibility of being tricked, at least in the areas that matter, right? Because I think that you have to have conversations that yield the answers that you're looking for instead of sometimes directly asking the questions you're looking for an answer from. Because people will lie to you. Because they know, I, I mean, because I have some non-negotiables and I always tell people to come up with non-negotiables and expectations, right? So if I'm online and I'm dating and I'm sending out questions, right? What do men do? What's the first thing they're going to do? You're like, I wonder what you want me to answer this question. Like, <laughs> You're going to answer the question the way that the person wants you to because you're thinking they want a specific type of answer. Instead, I think that if you're dating online and you find a person that you're a good match, right, after having your non-negotiable conversations, immediately arrange for a video chat. Immediately. And I know this is going to be hard for some of the older people dating out there online because they've lost a loved one and you know, and their partner has died and now they've moved on and tried to re-enter dating, right? But I think you still need to learn how to use video chat because every phone has it now. Like nobody's walking around with a flip phone without a camera. <laughs> Nobody. Just doesn't happen. And if they are, they're in this, inside of the old folks and dating there. Yeah, because there's no way people are still supposed to be getting catfish with all this FaceTiming technology that we have. I, I agree. And I feel like that's one means to catfish a process. But another thing that I think men commonly do to catfish women is financial security. Most women are looking for financial security, right? And I'm not going to say that that women don't do it too because I've seen I've seen some women do some sketchy things out there but for the most part a man cares less about your money or your stature in that way however they do care about the contents of your character your ability to be respectful and to yield and honor them in the way that they feel like they are, um, they're valued in the relationship now men will say I'm, you know, I'm set. I have, I live by myself and, you know, nobody lives with me. He's living with his mom though. I have my own car. His own car equates to him taking the public transportation or Uber. These are things. What, what, what if he stays in New York? Let me help your brother out. You don't need a car in New York. Every, most people take public transportation. Right. So that's not the part. That's the problem. The part is that he lied. Right. So if you say I have my own car, my own transportation, sir, you have everybody's. <laughs> I was just trying to help the brother out. Dang. Sir, sir, you have everybody. And I've been on a date before where a guy asked me to co-sign for him a car. Oh, shit. In, in, the, middle of the, day. in the middle, in the middle of the day. Well, at least he said co-sign. I mean, he had some money. His credit was just fucked up. Right. And then he actually called me. I thought it was a joke at first. <laughs> no, he was serious. <laughs> oh, how did, wait a minute. How did that date end? Um, it ended with me excusing myself. Uh, I was going I was just about to ask, did you stay the rest of the date? Were you no. nice or did you be like, bro, what the I was like, listen, sir, because I'm a very transparent person and, you know, I'm just kind of upfront and it is what it is. And I was like, look, you know, if you if 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 you had issues with getting a car, right, do you think the best place to get somebody or the best person to have somebody co-sign would be a person you're on a first date with in person? We video chat literally twice, known each other for two weeks. I haven't even done a thorough background check on you yet. <laughs> he tried it. So yeah. A apparently not. You would have seen that he couldn't. Uh, he would have needed a co-sign. I fought you. Uh, listen, listen. I have. I had no. I, first of all, it was a conversation. He was like the the question that he asked prior to right calling these people. He was like, so if you were in a relationship with the guy, would you co-sign for him the car? 
And I was like, well, I've never been in a relationship with anybody and they didn't have good enough credit to get their own car in their own name. Um, but why would you ask me that? Bam, he calls them. And I'm like, are you picking up the phone during the day? Just say you're no longer interested. But yeah, and then he, I thought he was like faking the phone call thing, but no, he was really on the phone with them and everything. Yeah. And then he was like, so they're just going to need your social security number and stuff. No. Absolutely. He did it over the phone. You have lost your mind all the way. I said, so yeah, we're just not going to do this and say we did. And I'm going to excuse myself, but you know, you have a good day and I hope that you find what you're looking for. Or at least somebody to call time for their car. This is just weird, the dynamics that men and women face, because I've lied to women to make myself seem like I was inadequate enough to date them, and they still were like, yeah, it's about to me. You know I'm interested. I'm like, jeez, I can't even tell you no. But see, that's what I'm saying. So here's the thing. I think a lot of people, um, a lot of people go through that process, too. And some folks think that, okay, this is a situation where... How, how do I say this is a situation where this is a place I could fix this person. Most people who are online dating have given up on the physical interaction or the interpersonal connection component. And they're no longer looking to connect with people in real life, physical face to face encounters and move things from there because something about that process didn't make sense to them. So what I do find is that people will find the people that they can fix up that can make them feel a certain way. Even though we want to say that dating is a selfish thing and we're looking for somebody for us, the reality is we're looking for somebody to help us complete us. That's what dating really is about. That's what physical tetherings and systems are really about because in and of ourselves, we are a complex system, but we're also a system that's tied to other systems and other beings and energy and things like that. That makes us function at a higher capacity. And so when people are looking to connect, they're, they're looking to connect to the energy that makes them greater in their purpose and their passion in life. And so what I notice is that when people are looking to hook up with folks and they're looking to connect with people, oftentimes they want somebody that says that they are worth something, that they made something great themselves. So it fulfills some level of of, of a, a, another type of purpose that they found that, you know, they have in life. So they're looking to fix people. Um, and sometimes these are people that are deeply traumatized. So I've seen this a lot. And, you know, you see it in a lot of people who connect with people that are narcissistic. Their relationships with their partners require a codependent personality, but the codependency is not necessarily that person being needy. Sometimes it's that person being traumatized and needing to feel like they're contributing to somebody else. And so what happens is the person love bombs them. So wait, let me read Kel's um, comment. No one in my online experience before I met the love of my life did not know, feel, or, or truly understand what a real conversation looked like, including me, that... What, that's what I found in the love of my life. That, that's that's sweet. And that is, I think that that's the most important component. You see what I'm saying? I think that connecting with the right energy, the people who have the capacity to make you greater is the key. What do you think, Trey? Yeah, because as you were just saying, like all of us, whether we admit it or not, when we're in, we're looking for relationships, we're looking for someone to complete us or to feel that part that we feel that we're inadequate in. So yes, I, I can agree with what Kelso just said. Okay. So I I, I, said, I mentioned knowing when you're being love bomb because the narcissistic character traits in folks, everybody has narcissistic character traits. And I mentioned this personality disorder traits more because in America, that's what we see mo more people developing on one end of the spectrum or, or another, right? So these are sort of like entitlement, but rooted in insecurity types of characteristics of people's personality. 
So people who are narcissistic typically will love bomb you. They will find what it is that you feel you need to fulfill your purpose, right? And like I said, oftentimes the codependent personality person needs to be important. They need to feel like they're adding value somewhere. Um, and they will kind of tap into that. So then they act helpless and things like that. And then they draw you in to their struggle. The reality is that struggle is never what it was supposed to be. And it kind of goes out to the catfish proof your process. Um, make sure that that person is truly who they say they are. Make sure they're functioning in the higher capacity in which they really are their real parts of their personality, the inside components of their personality are by asking them questions about their childhood, asking them about how they feel about their past experiences and relationships. Having those conversations will yield a greater level of understanding of the person that you're dating and the propensity for you to move into something greater like a committed relationship with that person. Um, also, do your self-exploration. So know yourself, know that you're vulnerable to that level of exposure. Um, do you want to add to? I, hope I just will say I'm, I'm very narcissistic myself, but no one will say that my narcissism hurt them or demean them in any type of way. They just say I'm an asshole. So most narcissistic people, contrary to popular belief, because this is a thing I think that folks talk about a lot and I think they mislabel. Most people who are narcissists, matter of fact, pretty much all of them, even though they lack empathy, they're not necessarily um, assholes. They're not like terrible people. That's why they love warm people because they are the charmers. They come off as extremely charismatic, um, very outgoing, life of the party. They need to feel important. Doesn't mean that they are, but they need to feel important. And, and when they don't feel important, they, they quickly dismiss themselves. Now you described me to a T until you got to the feel the to need important. But all the other stuff described me. But I can't help that. That's just who I am. But the grandiosity component is a key component to a person being a narcissistic characteristic holder. And not only that, but a personality disorder holder. And the most important thing is that all of that is meant to mask the deep insecurities from their past trauma. So they don't acknowledge the traumas that they had in their childhood or previous experiences. Um, and typically it's in childhood simply because with personality disorders, we have to see the symptoms start. They have to onset in early adulthood in order for a diagnostic diagnosis to be rendered. So they don't develop over the course of time, late life and things like that. It's about it being there and being prevalent. And this is something that they're avoiding, right? So people in, in relationships with narcissistic folks, they don't normally really struggle unless they're in a power struggle because they are also having those same personality traits and they're bumping heads. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or like a person that is truly in a powerful position and truly in a position to where they are important or they count being in a relationship with a person that wants to feel important and wants to count, but, but those people really aren't doing anything. You know what I mean? So you're saying I'm one of the good narcissists? Well, no, I'll, <laughs> I don't know. I can't say that you are because I haven't done a um, comprehensive history taking. All of that is important to the pro integral to the process of, of diagnosing. But I, I will say that oftentimes there are a lot of negative connotations associated with folks that have narcissistic personality disorder. And that's just not the way they come off. They're, they're not that type of person. Now, when you talk about antisocial personality disorder, that's a whole other thing. Or a schizo, schizoid personality or a schizotypal personality disorder. Those people can look a totally different way. But typically, narcissists are very, very charismatic, very charming. And I specialize in treating narcissistic personality disorder. So it's a heavy amount of my caseload. 
And a lot of those folks are really, really great people in general. The characteristics are only not a good fit for people who have an overbearing amount of those same traits themselves. I was about to say, it seems like most successful people are narcissistic. A lot of them are. A lot of them are. Because in order for people to reach a certain level or of success, you have to, there are a lot of character traits of a narcissistic personality disorder folks that regular people that we, even without the diagnosis, you have to encompass. At some level or at some phase of your life, you're always going to have one or more of those traits. They may not be there at the same time, which is why the diagnostic diagnosis piece is, is so complex because these are regular, all personality disorders are regular character components that people possess at some stage of life cycle development. What's important to, or significant enough for it to become a diagnosis is the way that it affects their functioning in the various domains of life and the prevalence of symptoms. You see what I'm saying? Over the course of time and then presentation at early adulthood, when they first enter that major component of, of um, identity crisis or whatever. But when they're online dating, sometimes it can be very, very difficult for them to find an ideal partner because they're, they're, very, they're looking for a very particular type of personality for them to mesh well with. So they're not gonna be a, a person that ends up with a lot of folks trying to date them because they'll flip out you know, with one conversation <laughs> because it's not going their way. You know, oftentimes it'll look like a kid having a temper tantrum. Um, but yeah, so I always say in order for you to avoid the love bomb situation with narcissistic character trait people where they're too heavy on the character traits, set some online dating healthy boundaries and healthy boundaries does not equate to control. It means that you are managing your outcome. Or dating with a person. Online dating question. How many, because like typically when you meet somebody first time in person, y'all exchange numbers and y'all can hook up within, it doesn't matter, but online, how many times is it tip, is a good time? How, how much correspondence do you need to have with a person online before you actually meet them? I feel like it, there should be minimal online correspondence. You know, everybody is different in the way that they move. But I think that if you're dating with the intention of, of building something greater, because like I mentioned earlier, some people date online in order for them to hook up and have sex, right? Casual sex encounters. That's not something that's atypical of this culture. We know that. So if you're dating with the purpose of building something greater or getting married, however, you need to have like an immediate meeting, you know, thing to where you're saying, okay, I want to do a video chat first so that you can avoid them being a catfish. After the video chat, then you need to struggle, um, structure an in-person meeting, ask them, hey, you know, when would be a good time for us to meet in person? Make sure it's in the middle of the day for women and men. Um, because for safety reasons, you want to make sure that you're safe in the online dating process as well. Men can get robbed. They can definitely be assaulted and things like that. And so can women. And, you know, you got to avoid those odds. So middle of the day, so everything is still moving and shaking. You know, it's on a day where folks are going to, even if you're there for a long period of time because you connected well, you're going to leave at a time that's still daylight outside. Um, the other piece I say make it about a week or so, you know, make it, you know, narrow that time down so that you have time to get to know them. But if they're, um, a, you know, a bust, if the date isn't good and you want to keep moving, you haven't wasted too much time on this person. You haven't really invested so much time to the point that you become resentful of the dating process or the person. Because time is the component you can't ever get back, right? And also, you want to make sure you don't miss out on, on what you're truly out there looking for. Um, the other piece, I made some other notes. Oh, for women, if you're going to meet a man on the first date that you met online, take an Uber. Because they can definitely stalk you, follow you. Had that happen. I, yeah. What did you, you do to this gentleman? 
for him to stalk you. People are going to be who they're going to be. <laughs> you said something to this man. No, no. I sat down with him and, and then we had a conversation found out we're not a good fit. And I was didn't tell him. I hope you find what you're looking for. And I left. And when I left and was driving, he ended up showing up across from my office. He was parked there for like several days at a time. And I didn't notice it. One of my employees noticed it and was like, do you know this person in this car? And I'm like, yeah, no. You know, and then sounds the, like you're leaving some details out, ma'am. You may have led this man on. <laughs> no, but we didn't. We had good conversation. It's just that our end goals didn't align with one another in life. Interesting. Yeah, <laughs> he was into some things that. No, it's not a good match. But you know, so we gotta we, you gotta start asking better questions before y'all meet up. Then it seems like you find a lot of deal breaking stuff after y'all meet. Well, that was in the that was in the initial phases, right? So I learned a lot of things from that. So that's how I'm able to give this great advice. <laughs> <laughs> Life will be a lesson. You know, it, they will teach you lessons. You will learn lessons from your encounters over the you know course of your experiences, and it definitely taught me a few. But so, um, let me see. I did that one. I just got a couple more before I can before I got to get off. But what are the benefits? I feel like the benefits of online dating is for folks that struggle with social anxiety um, and just being introverts. I feel like people with those conditions definitely benefit from being able to kind of have a large pool of people that they're able to select for, from and narrow down. Um, they're able to kind of look to people in their profiles and see what's out there, what possibilities they can build with and things like that. Um, I think it gives you a higher level of exposure, like you mentioned. I feel like it's also a more comfortable way to practice accepting rejection in a healthy way, right? And keep it moving. Um, you have anything you want to add to the benefits? Um, just easy access to whatever you're looking for on both sides. It's easy access, but I will say that I wouldn't put too much stock in these people's profiles because people lie. So don't don't get excited by what they say they are. Listen to them and get excited by what y'all connect with other than what they're saying they are because people lie. That's true. That's true. And also you, you have to be kind of on your P's and Q's when you're looking at profile pictures even because there are a lot of folks that steal people's profile pictures um, and yeah that ain't that's why I'm old fashioned <laughs> some of the dangers some of the dangers are of course catfish like major catfish completely different person and now you're exposed in a public space meeting somebody that you definitely de don't know what they look like who they are really and all that stuff so that's why i say you have to put the safeguards in place of video chatting with them um as a means to you really getting to know who it is you're actually coming face to face with at some point um the dangers of course are the possibilities of being mugged robbed tricked into situations that are otherwise unconducive for your physical health like assaults and things like that I think that um, those are some of the potential dangers, dangers, but also people who really struggle with rejection. Rejection is a danger as well because it's bigger for some people than it is for others. Um, yeah, I think women would prefer to get cussed out online than in person when they reject a guy. Because from Memphis, I, I've, I've heard some pretty wild stuff when women be like, I'm straight. I have been cursed out a couple times online too. <laughs> so, I don't know. But I think I, you like that better than in person. Well, I don't care. It's, you know, because I think people are going to be who they're going to be. And I understand that people react and respond sometimes off of emotion. And so I'm understanding of that piece. Let me close on my messenger. But I, I know I understand that. Totally. Totally get it. 
you know, and I can understand that they're upset and they're speaking from a place of emotion. So I'm not here to judge. I just know that you're still not going to gain any ground by cursing me out. <laughs> I'm here to judge, and I must say you look awfully thick in that picture that you posted the other day, ma'am. <laughs> Um, well, well, definitely it's fat, not thickness. Um, let's see. Holy agree. It's always good information and lovely as can be. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good to have a little extra fat. It feels pretty good. You know, you got to flaunt it while you got it. You know, when it's gone, you're going to miss it. That's life. <laughs> I say it's. You look thick, you say fat, regardless, it look nice. Well, I however we describe it. Yeah, I've been told by a friend of mine, she was like, Well, you know, I think thick is the term that they created to be nice about saying that people are fat. And I'm like, Okay, you don't have to be nice about it because I think, you know, I think people look at themselves in the mirror, they know what's going on. The you know? people on my 600 pound life are fat, <laughs> they're extremely fat. That's the difference. It's it's, it's fat. I don't care what adjective you put in front of it. It's <laughs> fat. That's what I consider fat. <laughs> well, you know, I can't argue with that. So, but some of them are very happy in their lives. I wouldn't call them thick, though. I would never call them thick. I'd just be like, you fat. <laughs> You're too crazy. I cannot with you. But as always, thank you for coming on to the show and thank you for voicing your opinions. Thank you guys for watching and tuning in. Thank you for sharing if you shared the content. And if you've not shared the content, do so now, please. Thank you. Hit the notification bell, the alerts and things like that will come your way when I'm getting ready to go live because I do try to schedule these things now. And also the biggest component of this is I am trying really hard futuristically in the month of July to grow my platform on YouTube. That will be my focus. So go ahead, make your contribution and share my YouTube channel with people so that I can grow it out to, I just want a good thousand people, I guess. That's okay. I got like over 25,000 people on Facebook. So why not? A thousand of you should definitely support and follow my YouTube. Okay. So help me grow my YouTube channel and that's what's up. Marketing so, plan for July, stream exclusively <laughs> on YouTube. Tell all the people on Facebook they got to come to YouTube to see you for the whole month of July. Okay. All right. So, yeah. So, Trey's going to help me reach that goal. So, marketing manager there. So, um, I'm going to stream exclusively on YouTube next month, you know, and that is my birthday month. So, it might be some really good content on there. You never know. You never know. All right. So thank you guys again for watching. Absolutely love, love, love you guys. Take care and please make better choices. Online dating can definitely be, be dangerous to your health and your emotional well-being. So protect your peace. Later days. Private just like so seas, damn pieces coming by the knees. We had a wish playing with the keys, waterfront chilling in my knees. Greenbacks, rack, blue cheese, murder ain't came up in the trees. Good dope, no price cheese, pop pills too high geek. Private just like so seas, damn pieces coming by the knees. We had a wish playing with the keys, waterfront chilling in my knees. Greenbacks, rack, blue cheese, murder ain't came up in the trees. Good dope, no price cheese, pop pills too high geek. Counting hundreds with my amigos, blue water frozen sub zero. Hit a lick, flip it twice, break bread with my people Who knock and look out the people, clutching my desert eagle Cock, aim, squeeze, trigger, empty clip and reload Pints, bills, two kilo, bitches coming in trio Shaking all ass, beat the pot like Migos Last second shot and one, free throws No master P, but I'm looking for the free code Pints, pills, two kilos, bitches coming in trio Shaking all ass, beat the pot like Migos Last second shot and one free throws, no master P, but I'm looking for the free code. Private just like so seas, damn pieces coming by the We had a wish playing with the keys, waterfront chilling in my leaves, greenbacks, rack, blue cheese, murder eight came up in the trees, good dope, no price.
right cheek. Pop pills too high key. Grab jet flights overseas. Damn pieces coming by the three. We had a wish playing with the keys. Waterfront chilling in Belize. Greenbacks, racks, blue cheese. Murder ain't came up in the street. Good dope, no price cheese. Pop pills too high key. Too high, too high key. Top flow, nose bleed C. 4A, 4AB. Push star, got no key. Money boy, Lou got sick. Take a bitch of paparazzi. Quay lose Bill Cosby. Rape a hoe, no, not me. Hashtag MB3, primetime NBC. Only I do me. That long I speak. Grab a jet flight, so seized. Damn pieces coming by the weed. We had a wish playing with the keys. Waterfront chilling in the leaves. Greenbacks, rack, blue cheese. Murder ain't came up in the street. Good dope, no price cheap. Pop bills too high key. Grab a jet flight, so seized. Damn pieces coming by the three. We had a wish playing with the keys. Waterfront chilling in the leaves. Greenbacks, rack, blue cheese. Murder ain't came up in the street. Good dope, no price cheap. Pop bills too high key. Mm, mm.